everything about cheese by now. Can you even yeah. name the 15 ones we've done? I don't know. <laughs> Three, Gouda, Alpine, oh, Blue, Sheep? <laughs> yes. Cheddar? Cheddar? That's Ooh. only six. That's only six. Fresh? Seven. Truffle? Oh, I don't know the rest. Aphrodisiac cheese. Oh, I did do. I wasn't there. Really. I had to do that one. <laughs> well, anyway, what is this one? <laughs> Sorry, this is, this is my job. I was taking a drink. Um, uh, drunken cheeses, all about cheese, booze infused cheeses. So our favorites. Uh, my name is Sarah. I will be talking about our wine. Rachel over here is gonna be adding some fun ad lib. Color commentary, as yes. they say in the sports world. Yes, and then our main host and person who did all of the research, <laughs> Christina. Hitting you with the hard facts yes. of drunk and cheese. <laughs> what are um, we tasting today? We are tasting six different cheeses. So, to give you a little brief introduction, so for centuries, wine, beer, liquor, spirits have been used in the art of cheese making. Uh, there's two different approaches. There's um, washing the cheese with alcohol and soaking the cheese with alcohol. And we'll talk a little bit about both, but we're gonna focus on soaking the cheese and alcohol first. Um, so this class is called Drunken Cheeses. What Drunken Cheeses means is that it describes cheeses that have been soaked or infused in alcohol during the production process. I was pretending to be a drunken cheese. Very good. <laughs> no? Okay. Which cheese? Uh, maybe like a, like a string cheese. I felt that. I felt that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, So on our plate are six different kinds. So you will hold the plates. You want to take the lid off so they can see me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I'm already fired, guys. I'm not returning next season. So feel free to follow along, um, eat when we talk about the cheese, or just start wherever you want, and then save a little bite when we talk about the cheese. So in the upper... Left-hand corner is Pecuri in Yes. That's what we decided it's called, mm -hmm. which is a sheep milk cheese wrapped in grape leaves that have been soaked in wine. Then the next one's Drunken Goat. It's that white triangle with the purple rind. That's red wine infused. And then we have a Mustard Cheddar Dragon Slayer beer infused. And then we have Ubriaco Alpino Rosé um, infused with rosé. And then Negroni Blue, which is infused with Negroni. Nice. And then uh, Rattlesnake, which is infused with tequila. So. And habaneros. And habaneros. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Just be careful of that one. That's all. I just want to think that there's a Yes, yes. Warning. And we have some fun accoutrements on the plate as well. So we have, I think it's the top one next to the curry, is a uh, spice plum infused with port. And then we have a champagne honey mustard. And then we have cherries infused with Barolo. Baro Baro yeah, these cute little guys. They're good, actually. I like them. And then <laughs> gin infused pickles as well, which Rachel loves. Love me a pickle. <laughs> and then you'll notice it's kind of cool that like gonna eat one. red wine, like red, like wine infused cheeses come from like Spain and Italy and beer infused cheeses will come from Germany and England mm. and like the spirits liquor uh, America. Yeah. <laughs> Beer country. Yes, exactly, exactly. And then, what are we drinking? Yes, um, this, if you added the wine this evening, is one of our favorite chilled reds right now. Perfect for this warmer weather, even though today is not that warm. But it tastes like Welch's grape juice. It's so good. <laughs> it is very just like juicy, fruity, so easy drinking with a slight chill on it. It is called Pomalo Plavina. It, it's 100% Plavina grape, which is indigenous to Croatia. Um, it's one of our favorite wines. It is, the word Pomalo just means to like take it easy, relax, no Ah, fuss. hence the label. Yes, hence the label. The people, we chose, we chose <laughs> this wine because the people on the label are drinking wine. And so we're like, ah, perfect for the drunken yes. cheeses class. But really it's just like, their whole vibe is like really, uh, emulating the coastal, just like super relaxing lifestyle in Croatia or the lifestyle of the Dalmatians is what they're called, the mm -hmm. people are called there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just like the perfect picnic, perfect sipping wine. We love it. I love it. It almost has a little bit of effervescence to it too. Oh, does it? Yeah, doesn't it sort of bubble? Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had it in a while. But yeah, it's good. It's just so light. I think it's going to pair really nicely with all of the cheeses, even the things that don't have wine in them. If we're tasting something with beer or with the mm -hmm. liquor, it's still going to taste good with the wine. 
light light reds are always a good way to go when you're pairing wine with cheese. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. definitely. All right, should we get into it? Let's yeah. get into yeah. it. I'm gonna so, eat my pickle. Please, I, I know. I shouldn't even. Oh, you have the jar. There you go. Those aren't the actual pickles, but because Rachel ate the rest of the pickles that are on your plate, but <laughs> <laughs> she ate the rest of the jar. I did. Um, so before we, we begin, I do want to say that even though these are all infused with alcohol, after the aging process, there's generally less than 0.5% of alcohol in the cheeses. So even though these cheeses are under the influence of alcohol, <laughs> it's non-alcohol. They can still drive. Yes, they can still drive after <laughs> the class. Per the FDA. Per the FDA. Yeah. <laughs> they said it's okay. All right, so first cheese is going to be that one um, that soft with the white creamy paste and it's wrapped in that leaf. You can eat the leaf, don't be scared. So Picuri in the vignette, sure. Um, translates to sheep in the vineyards. Um, it's Corsican, 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 yeah, they're Corsican. Um, but it's not from Corsica. It's what? actually from Blakesville Farm and Creamery what? in Port Washington, Wisconsin, a wow. domestic cheese. Didn't see that coming, did you? So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Blakesville's really cool. Their head cheese maker, Veronica Herdaza, she worked for Jasper Hill, Meadow Wood Farms, uh, Sweetgrass Dairy, which are all like heavy players in the cheese game. Um, it's a fresh, fluffy cheese mm. that has been carefully wrapped in grape leaves that have been soaked in Corsican Muscat wine. What is Muscat wine? Syrup, golden sweetness is the name of the Muscat game. So it is a <laughs> sweet dessert wine. Um, it's low in acidity, tannins, and alcohol. Um, the cheese itself is very grapey, delicate, floral. Um, it's super special because sheep's milk isn't really popular in the U.S. Um, sheeps don't produce a lot of milk, about half a gallon a day. Um, cows in comparison reason. are like six to seven gallons a day. Um, and the lactation cycle of a sheep is only 100 days, whereas cows is 305, which is also a certified cheese professional question on the test, so oh. make a note. You're not allowed to say. Oh, oh may or may not may or may not. on the test. No one knows. <laughs> Be surprised. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. All right. What is the significance of cheeses wrapped in leaves? So back in the day, leaves were used to help um, keep the cheese moist and dry climate areas. So it originated in like Mediterranean places. Um, and the leaves also help flavor the cheese. Um, you use chestnut, grape, fig, um, cherry, sycamore, walnut, all different types. And usually it's goat and sheep smoke that gets wrapped. Hmm. Is that for a reason or um, it's just kind of traditional? Traditional. Yeah. Thank you. And then um, they're harvested fully grown but when they're still green and so that way they're still pliable so you can still fold them. Um, brandy is often used uh, as a soaking liquid to enhance the flavor as a preservative, but the leaves also help preserve the um, cheese. So like sycamore leaves, you are used on cabral. Cabrales. Cabrales. It helps encourage the growth of penicillium. And then it just lets the air flow into the cheese and you get that herbaceous mushroomy flavor to it. Um, it's very labor and tense and so they don't do it as much anymore with the leaves and certain countries have banned it because like wrapping it with leaves because it's not sanitary but they still want to honor the tradition of wrapping in leaves so um, certain cheeses are wrapped in like foil that looks like a leaf or chestnuts are printed on a piece of paper to wrap that cheese um, I feel like it also kind of serves as the rind right like if you pull up the leaves like this is just yes, a fresh yes. did you guys try the leaves yeah, I tried a bit, bit with the cheese. I'm going to try a little bit separately. I was going to say, it made me think, because you asked about um, only sheep and goat being yeah. wrapped no, in leaves. Like I wonder if it is a rind thing, because you never see a cow's milk cheese without a rind. Hmm. Like a fresh chef and fresh yeah, yeah, sheep's yeah. milk cheese you see without a rind. But do you ever see yeah, that's other like than ricotta. like ricotta? You don't see ricotta. something. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Picori e vignette. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's a good one. I guess you're right. I don't have anything yeah. to do with it because. Oh, it's interesting. Yeah. I'm really loving this. It's like so fluffy. It's not too boozy either. And the texture is like more dry than I expected. It is very crumbly. And I like it with the spice plum. Mm. That's why I opened it. Oh, so we can yeah, try it. Super good. Does everyone at home like it? What are your thoughts? Let us know. 
like the sweetness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. All right, ready for the second cheese, guys? Yeah. It's a classic. This is one that a lot of kids like, even though it's got wine, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> that's true. So the next cheese is that drunken goat. So that's gonna be the tri yeah, triangle next to it, that little purple rind, which is edible. So drunken goat, goat's milk from Spain, AKA queso de Murcia El Vino. Sorry, my Spanish is awful. Queso de Cabra El Vino. Sounds great. Yes. So it's a protected cheese from Spain, from Murcia region. It's semi-firm, it has a bright white paste, uh, that purple rind, slightly fruity, um, has that wine aroma, smell it too, because you will smell a little bit of the wine. And then it's uh, got the sharp tang taste, um, but it's still mellow, like I want everybody to like me sort of way. Like it's, that's <laughs> the way the kids like it, right? Yeah. Um, it's not in your face. And it's a great cheese for like a dessert course. Mm. Um, the cheese is made from Murciana goats. Their milk is like high in fat, protein, and I think that's where you get that creaminess from. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned, so it's a protected cheese, which means it has to be made from those Murciana goats. And the goats have to eat um, like free range herbs and flowers and like mm -hmm. all the bougie stuff in the fields. Caviar. Ca and yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, Murciana goats <laughs> um, produce two thirds of the goat's milk in Spain. Um, That's a lot. Yeah. They make a lot of goat's milk cheeses there. Yeah, they do. Um, how they make it. So the curds are, once they're drained and pressed into wheels, they soak two to three days in this double like fermented red wine. And then afterwards, they age it for two and a half months after it's soaked for those few days. And then you get that deep red purple on the right. That's so cheese. interesting that it doesn't impart any it's color perfect. inside because if they just soak the curds, the curds are like obviously the little bits mm -hmm. once you separate the curds and white before it forms like a whole thing. Yeah. It's just interesting that it doesn't pick up any color. Yeah, yeah. Then... Yeah, how long is the is it in its form before they soak it? Do you know? I don't know. Mm. It's got to be a while because it's like a fully formed cheese before it touches the rind. Yeah, and then it ages further along. Yeah. Yeah. To find out, um, it's not as available outside of the Spain as Manchego is. You can find Manchego everywhere. Drunken goat, you would have to I think find in like a special department. And Whole Foods are here. Um, how did? Drunk and go get to America, you guys want to know? Yes. <laughs> did they go through um, Statue of Liberty, like yes. Ellis Island yes, situation? Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> First name drunken, last name goat. Yes. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> Color commentary, I gotta keep my job, guys. Yeah, yeah. You're killing it, killing it. One more day for you. <laughs> All right, so here we are, farmers. They have all this abundance of goat milk and they don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to promote goat milk cheeses. Yeah. So they hired an outside consultant. Ooh, a like, goat milk consultant? Yes. How do you get that job? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, too, I don't know. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> all right, so they hired this uh, consult and he was like, look, I went to Italy. I saw what they do there. That's what we got to do. So they started dipping wheels of goat milk cheese into the wine. Now, all one day, there was a trade show in Spain, and Michelle Buster of Forever Cheese went. And she was like, I love this cheese. I want to bring it to America. And I actually got to meet her. She came into the shop. Mm -hmm. And she told me when she went there that I didn't even like goat cheese, but I had this, and it was so good, so I had to bring it. And then I was like, what am I going to name the cheese? I don't know why I'm whispering, sorry. And she decided <laughs> on the Stairmaster she was going to name it Drunken Goat. That is the story of how drunk and goat. Where all good America. ideas come to fruition <laughs> on the stairmaster. Stair <laughs> and then um, it, it was so she got it to America. The region did so well because it got all these orders. She actually got an award for promoting or for boosting up the economy in Mercia. So that's pretty cool. It's and, very cool. Yeah. She's the Taylor Swift of Mercia. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think it's Mercia. I think they. <laughs> Yeah, oh, their C's, the yeah. Oh gosh, now you tell me. Uh, tell me Gene from Bottlecraft taught me that, so. Murcia? Yeah. It, okay. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna, he's the expert on languages. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. Give me his number. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, what do you guys think about this cheese? I could not tell you the last time I ate this cheese. Same. Yeah. This is such a staple and everyone just loves it. We don't even need to like promote it to sell it. Like no. I rarely suggest it oh, only because people just come in and ask for it. 
Oh, I gotta get up for this. Oh now. boy. Please you got long pause. arms, but not that long. Pause for commercial. The goat is drinking. She's drunk. <laughs> she looks fab. She's got little grapes in her hair. Oh, fabulous. It's pretty good. Yeah. That's not it. Does this cheese melt, you think? Nicely <clears throat> on a sandwich. I had someone order it. It didn't melt great. I don't Maybe think it would melt. It. Yeah. Sometimes I, when I'm making um, something that I want to melt, I'll plain the cheese mm -hmm. because you get, yeah, I just feel like it goes better. Way that better. being said, I'm eating grilled cheese tonight for dinner. Ooh, so. I grilled cheese. Um, okay, so <laughs> tell me everything. I got the new school American cheese <gasps> to use. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. Sorry, not booze infused, but it's called New School American Cheese, and it basically tastes exactly like Kraft Singles, except it's cheese. They yes. use real ingredients. Yes. It's actually cheese. It's not just like a cheese product that it doesn't. Yeah, it's like, cheese. Yeah, like aged cheddar, milk. Yeah, butter it's or glorious. Crazy. It melts so beautifully. I think I'm gonna put a little tomorashi in there too. A little fancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, continue. <laughs> not to get off track. <laughs> not to get off track at all. All right. We are moving on. So we are going to go to England now. Ooh, this is the one with the drama, right? Yeah, drama. Drama. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is called Dragon Slayer. You'll notice the mustard seeds and the red wax on the rind. I made sure to include a little bit of the rind on all these cheeses because I am a professional. I didn't get one. It's on this one. <laughs> We're sharing. Wow. I'm dipping it in the mustard, double mustard. Oh my God, tell us everything. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> so mm -hmm. English cheddar is the base of Dragon Slayer. Um, it has the addition of whole grain mustard seeds and an English copper ale called Pheasant Flocker and from Boland Brewery. Don't say it too fast. I know, I know. It's named after a tongue twister. Are you guys ready? <laughs> now you have to do the yeah, tongue twister. Hold on, let me, let me have a drink. Mm. Oh boy, is that helpful? <laughs> Here's the tongue twister. <clears throat> I'm not a pheasant plucker. I'm a pheasant plucker's son, but I'll keep on plucking pheasants till the pheasant plucker comes. Yes, I was so scared. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna get fired today. Um, right? Did they Gino bleep it just out? bleep it in the back? Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> yep, that's funny. Um, so the ale in this you, cheese yeah. gives it this creaminess and that tanginess. Um, it melts really nicely. We use like mustard cheddars on uh, our Bavarian sandwich. Um, anywhere that you would use mustard, I feel like it would go really well. Not to make this all about my eating habits, but I did um, this cheese with the pickles, the gin pickles the other day and did a grilled cheese. Like just that, it was so good. Pickles in a grilled cheese? Yeah, I know, wild. We try wild things here just for you guys. So when you come in, we can recommend these things. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Would you eat that? Uh, no. You don't like a hot pickle? No. You don't, right? Not really. Okay. No. Great, just checking in. <laughs> <laughs> I love that the mustard seeds in this one are whole, so they mm -hmm. pop when you eat it. Exactly. That's my favorite part yeah, of the Yeah, the mustard seeds adds flavor and texture. Mm -hmm. It's like a pop like. rock. It is, exactly. like popping candy. Yeah. Um, it's also a vegetarian cheese. What does that mean? Thanks for asking. <laughs> so people get really, like, confused with the vegetarian cheese situation so cheese is made with rennet and rennet is uh comes from the calf lining of the mm -hmm. stomach lining of a calf so when you say vegetarian it means the rennet is like a vegetable rennet so there's no uh, meat byproduct in mm -hmm. it um so good to know um for your vegetarian friends or if you're a vegetarian you're in the clear now are you ready for the drama Oh, yeah. I just spilled okay. the tea. I texted them like at midnight. I'm like, guys, I think I have a conspiracy theory. Yeah, these are the texts we get. It's really early. 1 a.m. <laughs> okay. And where's my foil hat? Okay. We're like, why are you up? And everyone's like, why are you up? <laughs> We're literally all up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, go for it. So. I'm excited. There is a cheese called Red Dragon. What? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay. Which is, this, it's a mustard cheddar. It's basically the same thing. That one doesn't have whole mustard seeds. They are broken up. Not as good. Not as good. What officially? She said it. She said okay. it. Okay. Oh, no. All right. So, <laughs> Red Dragon is a Welsh cheese, okay? Their battle flag back in the day had a Red Dragon on That's why it's called Red Dragon. It's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Now, the Dragon Slayer is English. 
comes from England and it's called Ooh. Dragon Slayer. Red Dragon Slayer? Like, yeah. what if this was like a whole like thing? Yeah, they're fighting. They're, they're fighting. fighting. They're cheese fighting. I know. The English Dragon Slayer, they're slaying the, the red, red dragon. dragon. They're, they're the know. white dragon. Right? Yes, yeah. on the label. See? Exactly. Plus the maker is Excalibur. That's the everything case. I need to know. <laughs> you, you know that's the name. You guys know what Excalibur is? It's like the King Arthur. Yeah, what is it? It's the sword. Yes, it's the sword. <laughs> <laughs> we did not plan this. <laughs> I didn't know. Big oh, okay. King Arthur fan over here. Don't worry about it. Did I have a childhood bunny named Guinevere? I did. Continue. Did you hire them? What? Like, <laughs> you're such a fan. <laughs> Oh, it was bunny. a rabbit. I think you said bunny. Oh, I think you know a bunny, cute. like a like a bunny, like a like a bunny. hop hop, like a rabbit. Oh, yeah. cute. Yeah, love it. Yeah, I continue. So okay. So, anyways, there's nothing on the internet about this, so I really think I need to get on Reddit. So it must be true. I'm smart. You said it first. Yeah. I think you need to go to Wales and like get to the bottom of it. Are you gonna sponsor no. me? Yeah. <laughs> Investigative cheese reporting. Right. Yeah. Christina here live. <laughs> reporting. Reporting live. Okay. So this, this just—it's <laughs> not true. It's not true. This just in ten thousand years ago. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So this cheese is aged for only three months, so a younger cheese. Um, and it, that wax I was talking about earlier—that um, a lot of cheddars are dipped in wax to help keep the moisture in and uh, prevents like bacteria from growing. The color has no significance except for dragon. Red dragon slayer. Right? Dragon slayer. Dragon. And Are there any other mustard cheddars that you guys know of? All over our cheese wires. Oh gosh, it's not. The red wax. So, yeah. But it's um, food grade, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You, you get a little bit, it's it. fine. It's not a big deal. Um, not real. I mean, I, I think like Trader Joe's has one. Like, they I've do, seen yeah. mustard cheddars, yeah. but I haven't like taken note of the producer. I feel like they've been. They all, in the ones I've seen, they all look the same. Like, you know how like cheddar yeah. looks different everywhere and goes. Gouda looks different every, everywhere. Like mm -hmm. the mustard cheddar, they all look exactly the same to me. Yeah. They do, yeah. I watched a YouTube video on how to make it. And? Um, I could do it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Wales and England, watch not, out. Not a lot there. <laughs> yeah. What am I going to call my cheese? <gasps> oh, ooh, um, a different type of dragon. <laughs> The queen of dragons. <laughs> the queen of dragons. Mm, that's okay, that's a little RuPaul reference oh, somewhere oh, in there. Oh, I like okay. it. We'll circle back. Okay. Yes. Now, what was interesting when I learned is that the beer has to be room temperature when you make it. Oh wow. Oh, because if the because the curds are a little warm, so when, if you add cold beer, it won't like just changes the temperature too much. Yeah, it just messes with how they chemistry. Yeah. Do that. Like chemistry. chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> Drunken cheese. Chemistry. And there's a whole dance. choreography <laughs> at the end of this. Like after the credits? Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. Outtakes. No, it's like baking. Like everything emulsifies better if it's room temperature. Like uh, your oh. butter room temperature, your eggs room temperature. If everything's just like similar t temperature, uh -huh. it's not messing up. That, that makes sense. Is that why you have to temper things? Like, what is tempering? <laughs> With the bowl and the chocolate. That's different. Yeah. Oh, that's different. Oh. Over the steam? That's different tempering. Oh, no. Well, like, so I you mean, don't the, get the oil like when oh, you're yeah. making so an aioli. Tempering is just like bringing things to a temperature that you're looking for oh. at a specific okay. uh, rate. So, like, tempering chocolate, you're bringing it so way too much in So that it stays glossy, right? Yeah, and so you, like, like, you bring it up, you start melting it, you bring it up to a certain temperature, then you have to bring it down to a temperature to hold it, and then it's like a bowl. But yeah. then like tempering eggs, you don't want, this may have to do with the cheese thing, you don't want to cook your eggs too fast. So you don't oh. want to add hot liquid to cold eggs because okay. then it'll like cook instantly. That's why yeah. you just like add a little bit of hot liquid. It's like carbonara, it. like then you get scrambled eggs and pasta. Exactly. You know? It's like the temp, like bringing things to the same temperature at the same time. That makes like sense. Like very slowly. So I can see how starting with things that are all the same temperature just eliminates that margin of error. Oh, see? Yeah, cheese is a real science. I feel like people come in here and sometimes they're like, oh wow, this cheese is expensive. And it can be, I mean, it certainly can be, but it's just like so much science and work goes into it. It's yes. not just like, you can't just like grow some pasta in boiling water, you know? Oh, like no, this no. is, they you gotta measure everything. Yeah. What? 
you have to like measure the pH. It's got to be specific. There are batches yes. of cheese that don't work out because there was some contamination, not harmful, just like something where the cheese texture didn't turn out right. Like, yeah. It's crazy. Yes, it is. And some people just come into the shop and they're like, well, I can make this. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> like you, you just said, Queen of Dragons. I work here. I work here. Queen of Dragons. Is that my new cheese monger name? Yes. Dragon player? No, it's Queen of Dragons. Oh, great. I love it. Excellent. I love it. What's next, Christina? Oh, I like this one a lot. So the next one, note the rind. Note the rind. Sorry, we're saying no to me. No, yeah, okay, there we go. So this is no Ubriaco of Pinot Rosé. When you hear this term, this is like drunken cheeses, this is where it comes from. Um, it's an Italian word for drunk. Mm. So anytime you see ubriaco, like prosecco or rose, it means it has been soaked in alcohol. Can you use it with people? Like, you're ubriaco. <laughs> Maybe you say it like under your breath, you're like, ubriaco. You know, like that. Oh my God, I'm amazing. Okay. I I'll hope so. <laughs> that could be your cheese longer name. Oh my no. God. <laughs> I wish I knew that. <laughs> I wish I knew that earlier when we pick names. Okay, so now, okay, the legend goes, I love a legend. Yeah, So yes you do, Queen of Dragons. <laughs> yes. Okay, so how did Ubriaco become drunken cheese? So, mm -hmm. World War One, the mm -hmm. Austrian army invaded mm -hmm. Northeast Italy, mm -hmm. okay? So they start looting the farmers' homes and they want cheese, give us cheese, or food, whatever, but cheese specifically. Mm -hmm. And so, the farmers were like, we're not giving you the cheese. We gotta hide the cheese. So they hid the cheese in wine barrels. Or actually, Ooh. I'm sorry, it was wine pomace, so which is the remains of like the grape leftovers. So they hid it in there. And then the army couldn't find the wheels of cheese. And then they moved on. And then the farmers were like, all right, get the cheese out. And then they're like, oh no, what do we do? Uh, taste is okay. They tasted it, it was great, they didn't die. And then now we have a apple cheese. Great, that's what happened. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> So then, uh, where were we? Um, oh, so um, Prosecco, Chianti, Merlot, like any of these wines you can. There's a beer one too. Ooh, yeah. From the same. From the same, same maker, yeah. Oh, which we'll get into, which I love. Yeah. Guys, it is so fruity towards the rind. Mm -hmm. I know. It's can I, I eat this rind, Christina? You can eat the rind, yes. So listen, it's soaked in La Jara Pinot Grigio Rosé, which is a dry Italian wow. sparkling wine for two months. The rose petals that are on the rind have also been soaked in the rosé. Oh. And then they age the cheese for like six to nine months. And it might have like a slight pinkish hue to it. Mm -hmm. And if you want to show them. Slightly. Let me move this rum and this chocolate. I'll take that. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. We can do it, guys. Oh boy. You're so strong. Oh. And so you'll see like all the little rose petals on it. I love it. Mm -hmm. So the maker of this cheese is Moro Formaggi. Um, they are the Willy Wonkas of the cheese world. So they do, um, do you like a hay cheese? So they put, like there's barrels of hay and they put the wheels of hay, sorry, they put the wheels of cheese in the hay and then it looks like, like a nest. That's crazy. Yeah, they do a limoncello. They yeah. do, mm. which we should look into that. Mm. And then um, the rosé, uh, prosecco, they have like, um, like blue cheese with like berries on it, like all sorts of, it's a chugo website. It just looks like a candy shop. Like so much like colorful things, um, the so Moro Formaggi was founded after World War II by Luigi Moro, and the current owner is his grandson Sergio Moro. And you need to remember the name; it's going to come up later. Okay, Sergio. got it. Sergio. Okay. Now, this is what I love about the Italians, right? They you, like they're just so they're dramatic Ubriaco. with the cheese. <laughs> yes, the Ubriaco. The uh, Prosecco, the Rosé, they put mm -hmm. truffles, they put mm -hmm. like hay, like they're just yeah. so dramatic. I love it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tru uh, truffles, but you know. Now, what do you guys think about this? It's very sweet. I love this cheese, but it's sharp too. It's like that sharp Italian cheese, but it's got like a floral fruity quality. I feel like it's both. I had only tried it fresh out of the fridge, cold and mm -hmm. plain, so very thin and crumbly. And I like it, but you get so much more sweetness at that point. Yeah. But here, like thick and like a bigger slice and also warmed up, I like it so much better. You get the crunch, you get like those crystals in there, you mm -hmm. actually feel them, and then you get a little bit more of that warmth that comes from that sharpness mm -hmm. in some Italian cheeses. Oh, like yeah. Pecorino yeah. has some times mm -hmm. with Pantaleo, Exactly. I like it so much more thicker and room temperature. And that's like so interesting about cheese too, is that the temperature really plays mm -hmm. a factor in what it's going to Absolutely. Did you try some? I did earlier when I did the study. But you guys have to try it with the mustard. Stephanie Ooh. likes it oh. with the mustard. Oh, okay. Not a Hi, Stephanie. Here. Yeah. I love this mustard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's excellent with the mustard. Good call. I love cheese and mustard mm -hmm. over jam, always. Me too. The Dijon that we carry is like, if you need to clear out your sinuses, you should get some. It's like, <laughs> really, I'm just gonna keep doing this. We're doing a lot of, a lot of hand movements today. I don't know, guys. <laughs> Here it's we are. drunken cheese. And did you notice on the label how I wrote drunken cheese? I did because you? you pointed it out to me. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, yes, I did. How creative. It's fun. I'm fun. Oh, we actually It's like every other, letter. yeah. Oh, shoot. I'm very funny. I tried to be. Thank you. All right. You are funny. You wrote a joke for me for one of the classes I was I doing. Did. You know, Carta. You didn't yeah. use it. No, I forgot to read it before the class. <laughs> it's fine. It was a good one, though. Has everyone tried the pickles yet? I just want to... Oh, no. Do you need more pickles? Yeah, mine's Should we get gone. More I guess so. It's okay. You can have them. I know you like a pickle. I just need one. Okay. Can I touch the pickle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> let's see. We got the giggles over here with these gin pickles. <laughs> They're Fair so gigglers. good. They don't taste like gin. I mean... Right? I think they just taste no, good. No, they've got like a nice bitterness, like almost in juniper though. Yeah, I yeah, think they, yeah. Like it, a little bit of sweetness, not not really bread and butter level, but. No. Because you don't like a bread and butter pickle. No. Okay, I'm trying to don't learn. Don't even come at me with those. Do you, they're not, uh, they're not spicy. Mm -mm. So they're infused with gin, rosemary, and I thought <coughs> I wrote juniper, but my, yeah. the uh, spell check wrote jalapeno. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess. Yeah, it's juniper. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, well, it's, well, not like I've eaten, it's not like I eat. It's not jalapeno. It's not like I buy a jar of these a week and then eat them throughout the week. It's fine. <laughs> she knows exactly what ingredients are in How many juniper berries per jar? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. All right. Are we moving to the blue? We are. Mm. Which is fun and exciting. I love blue cheese a lot. No, she doesn't. I appreciate a blue cheese. This is the blue cheese. Yes. In case anyone was. Yeah wondering. This one I've ordered so many times as a pre-order, which we then found out is seasonal. That's why it wasn't coming all the times I ordered it. But it What is it seasonal for? The holidays? Yeah, but then it just like didn't come. It didn't start coming until like January, February, yeah, March weird. time. Yeah, it was super weird. So they, I think it was made, it's made seasonally and then there was just like delay shipping it over here. So we didn't actually have it for the holidays. Mm -hmm. We have it for now. Holidays all year long. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so Negroni Blue is a mm. cow's milk cheese from Italy. So, it's Sergio. Remember Sergio? Yeah. Who? I'm Sergio. Just kidding. So, same Sergio company. Sergio Moro. Moro. Yeah, Moro Formaggi. They, uh, he wanted to create a line of cocktail-infused cheeses. Mm -hmm. so are there others? There are others. What? Like what? what? There, there was the limoncello situation, mm -hmm. but like this, what do they it's have? Soft? Yeah, it's a blue Ooh. cheese, and they have. Um, <laughs> we didn't know this. They have other ones. <laughs> okay, but yes, we'll but look they, it up. We'll That's awesome. awesome. So this is a very unique blue. It's mm -hmm. soaked in gin, sweet vermouth, red vermouth, vermouth yeah. bitter liqueur, topped with candied orange slices. So I did make sure everyone got a little bit of the candy orange on their piece, um, and so that way it's all the flavors of a classic Negroni. Um, it's amazing with the cherries. Ooh, the cherries are really good. I didn't think you I would like it. You can always put a cherry in with a Negroni, although I think it's and a blue. generally yeah. orange. Yeah. What? And a blue. Like I think the cherries are good with the blue. Yes, the absolutely. Sweet and the blue. I even drank a little bit of the syrup. It's really oh, good. Yes, do it. Great. She's mm. really getting it on this drunken vibe. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It is? It's not like overly sweet, though. Mm. Like that's, yeah. yeah. Are you going to eat the cherries? Can I take Go a sip for it. No. Yeah. We know the rolls. I don't. Sure. It just is really <laughs> good. It is. It These is. are imported from Italy, right? Mm. They're from Rotogo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ice yeah. Cream. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ice cream with friends. <laughs> <laughs> Next episode. <laughs> mm, that's good. There's like um, a garlic right? parmesan ice cream. We could do this. We'll, we'll circle back. Love it. Okay. Mm. It's vanilla. Yes. yes. <laughs> I had to incorporate cheese. Okay. So the cheese itself is going to be sweet, lightly fruity. Um, a little bit of sharpness from that blue and aromas of stone fruit and like herbs, like botanical herbs. Want some fun facts about Negroni? Please. Yeah. All right. The blue or the drink? The drink. Okay. Okay, cool. So it, the, the cocktail is over 100 years old. It was first crafted in Florence, Italy, 1919. Mm. 
and um, I around went, the same time as the the wine soaking in Austria. It was a time. It was. <laughs> They're really doing they, things. We got to be innovative. So, is that when World War One was? Well, I mean, a little bit afterwards, oh, but 1920s? I just figured. What? No, no. World War One was a little bit before. Oh. Nineteen fourteen. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Great. great history expert. Yes. Love it. And you can use sushi rice to help this cocktail. Sorry, what? It's bitter. Yes. You take uncooked sushi rice, you put it in the cocktail, you stir it, you strain it, and then it helps that Campari not be so um, bitter. Does it does that have to do with the starch? Because like you're always supposed to rinse your sushi rice. So I think it does because... Or like, does it absorb anything? It doesn't absorb anything. I think it's what's coming off of that rice as this creaminess to... Wow. It just oh, cuts oh, the I see. Oh, okay. that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay, cool. I think they do it with other cocktails, too. That's awesome. Yeah, so... We should do I've that. I've heard of that. Yeah. One. Let's do it. Next cocktails with friends. That's not the name of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> eating well, please. Uh-huh. So I did mention um, 1919, a little after World War One. I heard. So <laughs> this is where it comes from. So Count Cam- Camillo Negroni. He Ooh, asked the bartender. Count Negroni. Exactly. Count Negroni. <gasps> That's a good name. Can that be a cheese name? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Count Negroni Blue. <laughs> That's it. really good. It's so good. That's a good one. It is. So there he was. He asked his bartender. You know. Fosco Scarcelli at the Cafe Carsoni. Oh, Fosco? Fosco. Yes. yes. <laughs> so he asked him to strengthen his Americano cocktail. Do you know what Americano cocktail is? I've heard of it. Is it Campari and soda? No, yes, no. yes, 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 yes. Soda water and, and sweet improvements. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So Fosco. Fosco. Yeah, Fosco. Totally. He, yeah, he replaced that soda water with gin. Nailed it. Yes. That's and then what I would do. <laughs> All right, Costco. <laughs> Sorry, can you replace this water with, with gin? <laughs> and then, so, okay, so he replaces it with gin. And then the other bartender, you know, Pascal Oliveri. Oh, he's so good. Yeah, he's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Not Pasco. I don't know sure. about Pascal. So he added an orange garnish instead of a lemon garnish to like oh, to no. know well, that's that it good. was different. Yeah. Okay? Oh, nice. That's yes, awesome. Yes, and now that's what we know as the Oh my God, Count Negroni, that's awesome. Yes, a good story. I, I love that story. Um, I have a silly question. Yeah. You know that TikTok trend, uh, Negroni, Spagliato. What, what's a Spagliato? Prosecco in it. I would love that. I don't think you would. Oh, I you don't it. like you don't like the Bacari and oh. Aperol. You don't like those. Uh, what, okay, does it just what mean the Spagliato part? Do you know what is Spagliato in a cocktail? Like what's a Negroni Spagliato? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did I look this up before? Yes. Probably. Do I no. Yeah, I don't. Sounds like Prosecco. But you yeah, add with Prosecco. Prosecco. Mm-hmm. Is that it that makes it? Or is it like a double, like, like is Bagliato sparkling? Like, like, and then with Prosecco yeah, in it? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Someone, can, can someone Google this yes, for us, yes, please? Yes, Thank you, friends. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> we'll Google it after this. Yes. Oh, we should circle back to the difference between washing and soaking cheeses. Yeah, because we, we would oh. see this on the Negroni. Yeah. yeah. Can I tell you right now? Please. Yes. Please. yes. Spagliato means mistake. Oh. Wrapped, wrapped sparkling wine instead of gin. Oh. It's making it oh. Like, oh, and a mistake is Spagliato. So it's Campari and, and Vermouth per- and Prosecco? The drink Spagliato Negroni is. And Prosecco. Okay, and Prosecco. And Prosecco. Oh, okay, right, right. Very cool. It might be too bitter for you. We can swap it out for Aperol. That's a high Aperol. Are you really sure? Oh. Uh, does it taste like grapefruit? To me, I like that bitterness. I don't like that bitterness. Yeah, I'm sorry. Water sommelier. Hi. Okay. Which okay. is a very it's real thing. Gym. Water. <laughs> what? Water sommelier. Oh, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know oh, me. Water sommelier. Yeah, I know. Christina's very particular about her water. I am. Okay, tell us okay, about washing, like washing versus soaking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So the other method of incorporating alcohol into cheeses is washing cheese, washed brine cheeses. So that's basically coating a cheese with like a brine, like a salt brine, um, beer, alcohol, brandy, like you get the idea. Um, this encourages bacteria growth and it also good enhances, bacteria. Yes, good bacteria Yummy and it enhances bacteria. the flavor. Um, I have another legend. Mm-hmm. I love I, legend. I read this earlier in your notes. I love this. Okay. I don't know this one yet. I don't okay. think. So just so I don't mess up, I might, you know, read from this. Okay, so legend has it that the tradition of washed rind cheeses traces back to a monastery. Right? Well, that makes sense. Got it. Okay. And there was this young monk intern, if you will. Oh, sure, a monk intern. 
think they have a name, yeah. like a, but it's fine. Yes, he doesn't get paid. You know, it's fine. <laughs> so he had God doesn't pay him yet. <laughs> All right, the monk intern. Yeah, is so his name Fosco? <laughs> These are the early years. <laughs> it, 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 this is before thing. World War One. Yes, yes, exactly, okay. exactly. So, you know, interns, they get the cleaning duties, right? Mm-hmm. So he's got to clean the monastery. So he's, like, got this brine solution to clean the monastery. He's cleaning it with salt water? Yes, because that's what they have. Or alcohol, you know, the monks oh, are. Oh, okay. Yeah, they drink a lot, that's true. So they, uh, it has cleaning properties. Yes. Yeah, alcohol yes. does. Yeah, Salt yeah. does yeah. too? Yeah, well, like, this is just the story I read. <laughs> no, I'm wondering, like, if it's a stone, like, can you use salt water to... Well, so, do, isn't it that salt, uh... It's antibacterial. It's anti- it slows the, like, production of bacteria. So, like, feta that needs to be submerged oh. in a salt water brine, it's, like, fully oh, yeah. safe for bacteria. I mean? Yeah, yeah, you're right. And when you do, like, a salt water rinse. Yeah, like when or you're like, like a, a mouth cure there. too. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Wow, I never, of course I'm not making connections with cleaning. That's, no. <laughs> that's my vibe, but still. Okay, cool, <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Right. Cheese so, making, yes. Yeah, okay. So young monk intern cleaning salt, salt, great. So, but you know, he's like, uh, so he's like cleaning the whole monastery with this brining solution, and by the time he gets to the cheese caves, he's like, got this water solution, salt brine, it's like a little funky, a lot of bacteria. He's going to use the same towel to wipe the cheeses down. Stop it. It's the facts of life. I'm so sorry. <sighs> so that's the myth of like how it gets this like. That was a horrible myth. I, yeah, I <laughs> thought it was interesting. <laughs> it is interesting. I okay, okay, so what happened? Like this so he's unaware of the consequences, and mm-hmm. so now the, the so these cheeses started developing that um, stinky uh, reddish like rind. Yeah, the like bread. a poise and like. Pelagium. One, yeah. The yeah, Brevi, yeah. Brevi Bacterium Linens, was that his name, the monk? Ah. Did they name it after him? <laughs> I think so. Brevi so. Linens. <laughs> Bray Linens. <laughs> Brevi <laughs> Linens. Yes, yes. Oh, okay, okay, we're making moves. All right, so now, okay, so then, okay, now the cheese looks a little weird, thanks for the intern, okay? <laughs> but, you know, the monastery lifestyle, they're not going to let anything go to waste. Sure. So they got to eat the cheese. They, they made him to. test it out. They made him test it out. And he didn't die. I was like, did everyone die? <laughs> no. Where's the story going? So he didn't die. So they're like, okay. Right. So now we're going to eat the cheese. Oh, they made him eat. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So. Now puppies him. <laughs> and now he's on the payroll. <laughs> he's still alive. Because of the... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was a very interesting story. It is. It is. Story. So I have some science now. I usually you handle the science. I, I'm happy for you to handle it. Please. Okay, let me see if I get this right. I okay. didn't know salt could clean things, so I mean, I don't. I think I'm out as science expert. Yeah, <laughs> turn in your white coat. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you're not wearing it right now. That's why I'm not wearing it. I knew. Okay, yeah. yeah. So when alcohol comes into contact with organic acids, the enzymes in the cheese are going to chemically react with the alcohol and produce a lot of Esters? What are esters? Mm-hmm. Esters. <laughs> ketones? Ketones? What's this word? Ketones, ketones are also things. We're doing yeah. esters. Yeah. Who's asking you? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're a chemical. They're a compound. There we go. The compound. compound. I needed compound. like. Yes, okay. And they give that fruit and I'm floral I'm going back to Orgo, notes. you guys. <laughs> the fruit and floral notes. Got it. Yes. Which I thought was interesting. Yeah, That's esters cool. are very fruity floral. They are. You can smell it, like when you're doing reactions in the lab. Oh, really? Yeah, you can oh, smell when see? like this is, this yeah. is legit. Okay, yeah. cool. Love it. Nice okay. work. Fun. Love it. Okay. And the fatty acids are what give the cheese its distinct like odor and flavor a lot of times too, like in the goat cheeses. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know it's a specific fatty acids. Interesting. More. Tell us more. No, that's okay. all I have. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we talked about the Negroni. We talked about washing cheeses. Mm-hmm. Any yeah. questions so far? One, Karen can't take it. What was the joke that you wrote that wasn't used? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was better than what I it is. also wish that for you right now. I so, don't even know this. Do you want to tell it? I don't even remember what the joke was. So it was a, <laughs> thank you for bringing this up. It was a uh, burgundy class, so um, Christina made the plates for me because she's a solid team player and her I plates are beautiful, plates. so I appreciate her. 
and um, she had put cornichons on it because they are French. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> um, the little French pickles. And so she wrote that she had put cornichons on the plate, which I love because I was like, I can see the plate. There are cornichons on here. But anyway, it said, <laughs> in quotes, great with everything except your wait, morning. Wait, what? I said cornichons are used to cut the fat in, like, meats. Okay. And it's good then. And then it's, <laughs> it's great with everything except your morning coffee. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> what does that have to do with wine? Nothing. It was just like, it's good. It's great with everything, but, but like, Rob's not your coffee. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I wish it was better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cute. It was cute. cute. It was you know, cute. People love that. Yeah. You know. Anyway, oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rough. Okay, all right. Rough we... crowd. Yes, yes. All right, we're moving on to the very last cheese. Guys, I can't handle this cheese. So I don't, know I don't think I'm going to eat it. Eat it. <laughs> Where it's really it? good. We just we have heartburn problems yes. here at the shop. We're very... I don't, but we're oh, having... Well, you have other problems. I had to <laughs> migraine every day. Queen of dragons. <laughs> Tire, yeah. All right, dragon. Okay, all right, so this is a very spicy cheese, so if you haven't tried it yet, proceed with caution. This cheese is called Rattlesnake from, it's a cow's milk cheese from Sheboygan. Sheboygan, Sheboygan like yes. Wisconsin. Um, it is from Deer Creek Cheese, um, and it's their animal series. So all the cheeses in this series are named after animals near the forest that they're by. There's like a forest nearby, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. The Sheboygan Forest. <laughs> I, that was funnier than the coffee joke. It, <laughs> it was? Yeah. Yes, nailed it. Okay. I'm the joker now. You're the science expert. I'm the when joker. Did it change? When did it change? I don't know. It'll probably change back. So. I hope so. Yeah, don't worry. It's, it's all okay, coming around. Okay, we okay. all share. Yeah. All right. Ooh, okay, here we go. Okay. So, oh, and then the artwork and all the cheeses is um, made by the daughter of the owner of Deer Creek. Cheeses. So, that's cool. Yeah. Um, is so, she an uh, artist or is she just, yeah, that's just like a hobby? Um, I think it's a hobby. Yeah. But definitely trying to get more involved in the cheese making yeah. business. He's just a very oh, cool. uh, like traditional, old school kind of business man. She has all these ideas and he's like, nah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Love okay. it. So like a skull with like a rattlesnake going through it this because she says, this is how your head feels when you eat this cheese. So that's oh why she's It so is. Also, I'm definitely right. afraid of snakes, but everything's fine. Are you? Yes. I didn't even want to see them. No. I didn't know this. Yeah. Good to know. Okay, moving on. Okay, so the owner, which I mentioned, the illustrator's father, his name is Chris Gentine. Um, he is a licensed cheese grater, which you can only be, you get that. Not a grater, but like. G R A D. Like, yes. a, like a gold star. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And he makes his own cheese as a side hobby with other master cheese makers in the area. So this particular cheese, he spent a year making with this guy named Kevin Henning. And it's made- Oh, of Henning's cheddar? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. That's cool. Nice, cool. Um, it's a medium aged cheddar and it's infused with a premium gold tequila. Well, well, how do you say it? Jose Cuervo. I don't drink tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, okay. Um, and habanero peppers, I eat habaneros, so I can say habaneros. Um, it's spicy, it's sweet, it's tropical, and it's hot. We have to eat it. Oh, do we have to eat one on <laughs> Yeah. All right, should we put the whole, like, the whole thing? Can you eat the rind, or does it have a thin wax on it? I think there's a thin wax, yeah. but I don't know if we got any of those pieces. Well, you smell. Gosh. How much are you gonna eat? This much. Okay. I'm not. I'll do the same. Cheers. 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 Uh, uh, it comes later. I like guess fine. Oh. oh, the bite. It is sweet though. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> Where's the milk? <laughs> we have milk in the bag. The cheese. The cheese. I need the pickles. <laughs> Start drinking right out of the bag. <laughs> Did you guys it's try it? It's so it hot. hot. Everybody loves it. We make quesadillas with this one. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. That would be good. <laughs> Some people want, came in and wanted to try it, and they kept being like, can, can we have the rattlesnake now? And I'm like, I, I can give it to you whenever you want. I just suggest you taste it last. Yes. Just yes. because your palate gets a little tired, and that's why you've served it last. Exactly, yep. Yeah. And they were like, oh, I guess we'll wait. And then the one woman was like, no, I want to try it now. And I'm like, of course, you can. You can literally do right, whatever girl, you want. I'm happy to. Exactly. And then they were like, ah, ah. 
<laughs> it was really funny. And I'm like, here's some crackers. Okay, and then they tried another hot. cheese. And they're okay? like, I can't taste it. Are you okay? Do you need some milk? <laughs> You're sweating? Yeah. <laughs> I love this. She never does this. I know. This is oh. great. Give her more. You want no. some more? No. No. Okay. Okay. I told you. See, you took only took this big of a bite. It's <laughs> yeah, her whip. Okay. I am. Anyways. It is good, though. It's flavorful. It's yes. not one of those, like, it's spicy, but it's not one of those spices that I feel like just completely negates the flavor of mm -hmm. it, which is what I like about yeah. this. Yeah. I mean, am I going to eat more? No, but that's my yeah. own personal Yeah, issues. I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah. it for what it is. Exactly. Yes. And people love spicy cheese. So yeah, they do. Yeah, great. and it's nice that we have a spicy cheese because a lot of people ask for one, and we didn't have one like this before, so. Right, with the sweet cherry Ooh. or something. Oh, yeah, oh, that's a good call. I'll, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going back in. Uh, fun facts about the cheese. <laughs> Don't drink so wine. Hot. That's going to make it way worse. Have a cracker. The wine tastes good. <laughs> like, literally, this is milk. Just, like, eat the chunk. Oh, it is. Oh. It's milk. Oh, my God. I'm trying. No, I don't think. I think that's going to make it worse. Acid? Oh, wait, cool. Okay. Mm. Okay. Great. Okay. You just well, everyone know. else seems to be surviving, but you. <laughs> yeah, we're doing great. She's like allergic. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we're like time. making butter, and she's like, the throat's closing up. We're like, oh. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Sorry. Okay, back to rattlesnake. <laughs> we're done. No, no, we're good. Okay, no, okay. We're good. The snake venom. Oh yeah, we'll get to what? that. Yeah. What? I wanted to like I had a little cute fun fact. So oh, this one third place. Is it a joke? No. Okay. I quit. <laughs> Anymore. Okay, so it won third place at the Wisconsin State Fair, which I think is very important to know. That's super important. They yes. have so many cheeses in Wisconsin, yes. so many quality cheeses. Yes, yes. Because, right, wasn't, isn't Blakesville, the Picuri was from Wisconsin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Anything else? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Sheboygan. Sheboygan. <laughs> I met with the cheesemaker when I was oh. in Wisconsin last year. Not the cheesemaker, I met with the daughter, Sophie. Oh, oh, we'll talk about that too, yeah. No, yeah, so it was just our first night in Wisconsin. Um, one of our distributors, Gourmet Imports, took us on this buyer's mission in Wisconsin. Shelly led the trip. Mm -hmm. She's from Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin. She is a delight. Truly. Um, and the first night that we got into Wisconsin, we just met at the like hotel uh, conference room. Mm -hmm. And Sophie came there and set up a like grazing table for us. Oh, and then we all wow. picked our cheeses. And then she did the presentation. Her dad was off doing some fancy cheese business. Mm -hmm. I think it was like mid-cheese season. Ooh. Yeah, because this was... May last year, so, mm -hmm. um, but gave us a whole presentation on all the different cheeses, and it was like so interesting, and they had talked about this analogy that they use about the bitter basement. I didn't tell you about that. Oh, okay. okay. No, about how, like, cheeses, he sees the flavors of cheeses, like, on a slope, like a scale of some sort, mm -hmm. and how some cheeses, like, you know, sweet, and then you go to bitter at the bottom, and how some cheeses dip into this bitter basement that adds like this rounding out flavor to the cheeses and that's like one of his favorite mm. things to do in his cheeses. Oh, I love that's that. Interesting. Yeah, and we just love that phrase, bitter basement, because yeah. it's Ooh. cute. You can yeah. use it tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> love it. Ooh. Do you think the monk in turn cleaned the bitter basement? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Probably with that same towel you brought the cheese in. <laughs> Oh, don't touch your eyes after oh, oh. touching the rattlesnake. I kind of that explains a lot right now. Yeah. Oh, oh my really? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're fine. We're great. We're gonna make it through. I'm better than you. We're okay. You guys okay? Um, if you haven't eaten the whole cheese, um, you'll notice it's like marbly looking, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so that's where does that come from? Um, the cheddaring process. You want to talk about the cheddaring process? Sure. The cheddaring process is a process, it's a verb and also a noun, which I love. Um, and it's the way you make a cheese. So a cheddar is a cheese made in this way. You can't, I mean, I guess technically you can call anything a cheddar, but you wouldn't, why would you? Exactly. Anyway, so to cheddar something, right? You separate the curds in the whey. Yes. Um, so you get the, you know, the whey liquid that they use for mm -hmm. like whey protein. Um, or a new company, Wayward Spirit, who we're having a class with in late April, makes distilled spirits out of the way. That's cool. Yeah, yeah that's so really we're getting cool. that up on the website soon. That's going to be so cool. I haven't tried their stuff yet, but they're they're really cool. Yeah. It's like a whole team of women. They're awesome. Sorry, okay. back to the cheddar. <laughs> 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 so you separate the curds in the way. You take the curds, and they're already, they're kind of in like chunks. Like um, cheese curds. The same cheese curds yes. that you get. Yeah. Well, not quite yet, because but you mill them first. Shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they're like, yeah, they're a little bit bigger, they're a little bit softer, 
then you mill the curds, which means they literally put them through the machine and then they pop out those curds that you would eat, those mm -hmm. fresh cheese mm -hmm. curds. And then they put those in molds and they let it sit and then they stack cheese mm -hmm. upon cheese and they do that in several rotations. Mm -hmm. And that's how you make cheddar, that's how you get that acidity that cheddar is. So like Christina was saying, you can kind of see the curds in this. So some cheeses, they don't do this stacking process, and mm -hmm. so you don't necessarily see the curds in the cheese. But with cheddar, a lot of times, that's why it can be so crumbly, Yeah, exactly, right? yeah. It kind of like can fall apart into the curds. Yes, Is that yeah, okay. perfect, yep. Thank you. <laughs> so that, that red like veining, like that marbling that you see, that's tequila, and they add dried ha ha uh, habaneros. Oh my god, there we go, the habaneros. Mm -hmm. um, and so, when, okay, so up a little bit. So a couple years ago, before I became a cheesemonger, I went to an event downtown San Diego called uh, like Cheeselandia. And it was like a warehouse with cheese everywhere. There was cheese in the trees, cheese loaves on a Ferris wheel, cheese like off the wazoo. It was like grazing tables, all this. And uh, it was really fun. You can actually go to Cheeselandia and sign up and they send you free stuff like all the time. It's amazing. Like cheese boards, free cheese and all that jazz. So anyways, at the end of the night, they were giving out whole wheels of cheese, and they actually gave me two wheels of the rattlesnake, and I wasn't, you know, 100%, like, oh, well, maybe I'll give it out. This is hot, and I didn't eat it all. I gave it away. Yeah. But Chris was there, the Deer Creek cheese, cheese maker, <laughs> and uh, he was telling people that when the they get the when they drain the whey, they get a red Solo cup, and they scoop up the liquid with the habaneros, and they call it uh, drinking the venom. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was like really fun. I was awesome. how spicy that is. And yeah, tequila, no. like, but because it's like not. Yeah, I guess it's like, it's like a little bit of whey that drains off from it, so that could help. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. No, thank you. That's hilarious. Yeah. So you know, here's to drinking, drinking the venom. <laughs> drink, drink the venom. Drink the venom. <laughs> Do we have any favorites? Do you guys have any favorites? Let's see. Any of that he says. Any favorites? I like the there? picori. That was my favorite. I think. Personally, I like the drunk. The Riaco. Yeah, I mean, I also. <laughs> like, what? Uh, I was like, I think this was the class. Wait, what's this chocolate, Christina? Oh, from Compartes Chocolate and from LA. And it's really cool. Their artwork is in the uh, Smithsonian. Like, every package of the chocolate is just super fancy. So it's dark chocolate with strawberries and champagne. I forgot to tell you, it was infused with the champagne. Of course it is. I love all the little details of this plate. Absolutely. Yeah. The ch chocolate's good. It is um, really good. It's real black chocolate. Yeah. I'm all out of facts, guys. Well, thank you for joining us for our 15 Vermont Coast Friends. We've done a lot of these. Nice. Um, hoping we can do another one. We need a theme. Yeah. Ice cream with friends. Ice cream with friends. You maybe. already got people oh. signing up for that one? <laughs> oh. <laughs> we were going to do a spinoff, maybe. Oh, wine. See if, they would, see if they would be interested. Yeah, yeah. you know, well, we're gonna do like a wine like a, place. And wouldn't we want to do like a weird, a weird pairing class? Could that Ooh. be a fromage with friends class? Yeah. Could that be something else? Could be or a charcuterie plate. We haven't done a charcuterie plate. Oh, charcuterie. Yeah. That'd be fine. All meat. That would be fun yeah. too. So let us know. We're yeah, gonna see us in the shop. Yeah. 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 see. Um, yeah. we've got a bunch of fun classes coming up. We've got, um, here at the shop, we're just doing like a new arrivals wine and cheese class. So we just, you know, are always kind of revamping our wine selection here. So just want to show some few new things, pair them with cheeses. I'll be teaching that class, so that'll be fun. Um, we have, you want to talk a little bit about Cheese Week? Yeah, so San Diego Cheese Week is coming up. I believe it starts the 20th, if I of can April. do math, mm -hmm. right? Yep, the 20th of April. So that's all leading up to Liquid City. So Liquid City Cheese Expo is on the 28th. Um, and what happens is basically you can buy a ticket and you can come and eat all the cheese that you want and drink all the liquids that you want, non-alcoholic and alcoholic. Um, we will be there as Venissimo. We'll be... Um, melting some raclette, like literally like the big things of raclette and scraping it onto bread or whatever it is for you. So that'll be awesome. If you wanna get tickets, um, feel free to go to Benissimo. You get like a little bit of di a discount mm -hmm. if you purchase it through Benissimo. Um, and if you wanna check out the event, it's liquidcitysd.com. Um, but leading up to it is San Diego Cheese Week and we have an event almost every day Just at Del Mar. Sunday, we don't have one. <laughs> yeah, um, so we have tons of stuff. Dawn's gonna be teaching a really cool olive oil and cheese pairing class on that Wednesday. 
We're doing the Wayward Spirit and Cheese mm. class on the Thursday. Um, we got a Vino Carta class down in Little Italy for those of you who live closer to downtown um, where we're just doing wine and cheese. That's Basque themed. And we got something else, culture brewing. Yeah, a beer one. Oh. Up here in Solana Beach. Love their beers. The brewer is so cool. Mm -hmm. um, if you like science, you definitely need to come yeah, to that one because yeah. she is like all, like she'll go into it. Like yeah. the pH, I love everything. It. She's yeah. Really cool. Yeah, so that one's super fun too. That'll be on the Monday um, up in Solana Beach. So yeah, hope you attend some of those or definitely come see us at Liquid City if you're there. Yes, yeah. it'll be the three of us. That's a bit expensive. I wanna wear my holiday Jokes are free. <laughs> We have to pay them to listen to our jokes. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You might get a little bit of swag if you have to listen to our jokes. All well, right, cheers, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Good we really night. appreciate Good night. it. Good night. Good night. All right, now I get to drink. Prost. Plancha. Plancha. And perfect. <laughs>